Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And today, we've got a repair job on this uh, daybed, I won't call it a headboard or a footboard, I don't think daybeds have that kind of thing, but uh, it's part of a daybed. This is a nice piece, we're looking at the inside of the uh, inboard, the bed rail would have gone here, two dowels holding it uh, down and then a uh, large bolt would come through here from the back side and fasten it all together. Acanthus leaves carvings here and uh, oak leaves and acorns up on the top. Now our problem today is uh, this little piece here. Over on this side it's missing because this piece came apart and broke, split it into a couple pieces and uh, over the years, they've been lost. So what we've got to do today is get this back together and uh, reproduce this little turning right here. When I start on a job like this, one of the first things I look for is how it was put together the first time. And uh, there's always a chance that there are nails or pins or something in a, a tenon that goes in like this. But I have a feeling that it's not tenons. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking there are probably dowel joints. And maybe they're glued in, maybe they're not. But I do have one clue. Down here at this bottom corner, there's a little metal L bracket. And I can't say if that's original, but it does have brass plating, which makes me think maybe that is the way it came. Uh, this piece is probably from the 1950s, 1960s, a uh, very popular reproduction piece. Could possibly be even the 70s. But uh, I doubt any home handyman is going to go out and find screws that are just brass plated on the top and nowhere else. Well, that was as easy as I could hope for. I don't do enough lathe work in the lab to warrant giving the Craftsman King CNA lathe its own place on the floor. It's just too big of footprint. But I made it quick and easy to set up when it's needed. It's mounted on a fixture so that it fits on the Ryobi folding bench. The back casters have bumpers which catch on the floor as soon as it tilts so I don't have to chase it across the shop. The dolly it rolls on folds down to make a tool bench. This piece is just a little over 13 sixteenths in height, which is just a little thicker than the walnut stock I have on hand. I cut two circles on the bandsaw and glued them together. The tenon it fits on is three quarters, so a three quarter hole lets me hold it in the four char jug. This ensures it will be perfectly centered on the spindle. If I drill the hole afterwards, it's really difficult to get off center. And on a piece this small, just a little off center would be obvious to the eye. I trim it down to the big and little diameters to mark the thickness of the beads. I like it to be longer than needed in case I have to turn it around to finish the big bead. Everything looks good so I can part that off and check for the final height. Careful measurements are good, but nothing beats an eyeball test to make sure everything is the right shape. The problem with this piece is the small radius on the inside curve. This is when cheap turning tools come in handy. I grind the shape I need and hone it sharp. 
The traditional woods for American furniture have always been oak and walnut. Whichever was used, it was common to stain them to look like mahogany and sometimes cherry. Matching the old stain is sometimes a matter of trial and error, but I've done enough of these repairs to have a good starting point. There is a stain labeled red mahogany, but it's never red enough. I put on a base coat of red Sedona. I have no idea what a Sedona is or, or if it comes in other colors. After the red Sedona, I apply red mahogany. Putting the stain on in layers gives the best result. Mixing red Sedona and red mahogany never seems to do as well. I think that's going to do. Now I have to decide how I'm going to put it back together. Now the way this was made is we've got a tenon here which this spool goes on top of. But to attach it to the top rail there was actually a dowel that uh, this piece sat on. And if that was all there was, probably what I would do would be saw this off, drill a hole down the middle of it, drill that out, put another tenon in it, and then it would fit up flush against the rail. But uh, I've got this piece here. And that's just about as good a way to repair something broken like that as I could think of. Big ring of wood around it. So that's what we're going to do. A little bit of glue in here, although... Honestly, I don't see any evidence of any glue on any of these joints. I could probably knock this thing apart with a uh, rawhide mallet and put it all back together. I'm using Type Bond 2 for this repair because uh, that's what they had on the shelf the last time I went to the store when I needed glue. This is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory. Thank you for sticking through this video this far. And uh, I hope that you will tune in for the next one. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much.